So, you guys know those iceberg videos, right? The ones that take some reddit posts of some ice with some text on top, minimally look it up on Google and then begin narrating it like it's some sort of incredibly dark and obscure thing? Yeah, I find those videos fascinating, regardless of how unoriginal they can be. I mean, learning obscure facts about a game or genre you love is pretty cool, and yet every now and then those videos miss on a lot of information because time is a construct that every human is bound to while having a limited amount of. Therefore, we develop recognition for whenever we are doing things that aren't utilizing it properly. L like me when I make these videos, unless you guys help me out by liking, commenting, subscribing and sharing, wing wing. So yeah, we're gonna be talking about a mystery I found particularly mysterious while looking at one of these icebergs. Yes, I'm stealing footage from Vincent's this video, deal with it. And as you probably guessed from the thumbnail title on what I said just now, we're talking about Tamadachi Life. Tamadachi Life, you know, the life simulator where you put a bunch of random people in an apartment and force them to do weird Japanese sitcom stuff as they start because you're too busy trying to get Tami Wiseau and the touting French guy from Monty Python on a relationship because, don't lie to me, it'd be incredibly funny. The game is quirky and has a lot of details most people wouldn't notice after hours of playing, like the fact that the Mii's are pigment sized or what about the Japanese exclusive music or even the OFFICIAL SHOCK ME, is that how you say it? There's a lot of cool and funny facts about the game. And then there's the creepy ones. What Nintendo said, oh, so they go to Germany and bring a piece of the BERLIN WALL! Ever tried deleting your save file? Don't. You have a 40% chance of being mentally scarred forever and it's actually a chance. I bet we all know the dreams, but what about when your me asks you if you like video games and practically any answer will result in the me's being aware of their video game existence? Or, or my favorite, when they nonchalantly ask, if your whole world was going dark tomorrow, why would you look at today? Oh, if you didn't think to answer your videos just now, uh, uh, that actually hurts my feelings. Here's uh, an extremely rare one. If your DS does not have enough information about the Mii channel for whatever reason, say either it got corrupted or you know you're trying to emulate the game, uh, yeah, just this one's better explained with images, just look at that. So one of the lesser known facts that these icebergs flash around constantly is the existence of an alternate sound font. For what? The love horoscope thingy you probably only use 4 times before you realize it has no effect on the gameplay and proceeded to forget about it. Honestly, I was pretty excited when I listened to these songs the first time around. It's new piano compositions by the composers of Tamadachi Life, who do a really good job at making music. Of course I wanted to listen more, but I didn't expect how classical they sounded. For the record, here's the music that plays around 5% on the love horoscope thingy in the non-Japanese version. And here's the song in the Japanese release. Needless to say, the composition is just much better, and this also applies to the more cheery songs created for this. Oh what joy! More music for me to add into my clearly real classical music playlist, and wait, what? Adeline? Why are people saying this song is about miscarriage? What's going on? Oh... So right off the bat and real quick, if you're easily triggered by discussions of this type of theme, you can skip this segment by using the chapters down here in the search bar, all the way to whenever I explain stuff about the song that may not be as depressing. Cause let me tell you, it's depressing. I mean, reading these comments for the first time really makes you give your computer a weird look. Stuff like... The baby isn't moving. We can just try again, right? What will Marcus say? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. That's straight up chilling. The name of the song, for example, when framed on this light, it just sounds really depressing because it just makes you feel like Adeline was supposed to be the name of a baby that never got born or something like that. But the worst part is how you can actually create a miscarriage in-game. The game is hard-coded to force you to have both mother and father while the baby is growing up. So, the solution to the issue? Simple. 
Miss with children are not capable of getting divorced. It's just not possible. However, Tamodachi Life works on a lot of correlations for children, which update on specific circumstances. So for example, if I send a traveler me off to another island and delete my save, the traveler me will cease to exist the moment another traveler takes his place in the dock. That's it, just gone to nowhere. No parents remain, no home remains, just darkness and the void where all deleted things go. And then, the way to delete the baby before it is born becomes simple. The update trigger for me is having children is to wait for the next day after the player has told the couple to have the child, but if between that interaction and the next day the couple suffers a divorce, the baby will never be born. This would also apply to deleting one of the parents or turning off babies in the options menu if you're a monster like that. Yeah, I agree it's creepy, it just helped make this song ever so slightly more mysterious. Thankfully, that's not the case at all. Miscarriage is never addressed in the game, and this whole divorce situation is most likely a bug resulting in some unprogrammed behavior due to how specific it actually is. I'm glad it's not at all related to the theme, but the echo chamber created in the comments of this video is very strange. Stuff like people claiming Adeline was another term for miscarriage, which... Well, it isn't. So okay, Nate got curious, Nate got sassy, Nate looked up intensively for 17 days minus 16 to find an answer to all of these questions. First question, when is this used? Yep, I've already talked about this, and yep, I'm going over the popular theories to cover. Well, the first theory says that it's an unused piano item. The theory is probably unfounded. I mean, the piano item would be cool, supposing it will work like the music box item or like one of those gifts you can give your miss. But as far as I know, there's no indication that this item was ever planned, not especially in any cut content of the game. Some people said it's an unused track, tying into the last one where, you know, you gave your miss and they would be able to play one of these songs. But other people said it's just completely unused, which is the logical conclusion most of the case. I, however, ruled this one out quickly since the Enka music was not unused, even when people would often say it was. And in case you don't know, Enka is a Japanese exclusive song. I think it was replaced with the ballad outside of Japan. Some people said it played when Ami died, which, yeah, it's honestly far fetched. And most likely just a result of people wanting to bring some creepy pasta action to the concept. A few people said it's actually the national anthem of the Soviet Union, so. Yeah, don't ask me. The baby is cancelled. I told ya, cancel culture is going too far. However, the real reason was actually revealed on a weird Japanese site I took a look at. And then between doing all of this research and the writing, someone shot it off in game, so have a look. Yeah, simple enough, just a Japanese exclusive song. Second question, who is Adeline? Or better, to whom is Adeline, because damn it, I'm pretty confident that this song is named after the composition that inspired it, Ballad for Adeline by Richard Clayman. There's a lot of similarities here, and I mean, I'm not sure I can point out all of them or whether or not I'd be very accurate because I don't know much music theory, but I can tell you they do sound similar, they do share a similar BPM, uh, they are both in the C key or though for if you know if, if, if you you if you are decent, I don't know. <laughs> and they both ask you to use red uh, oh, oh wait, that, that's a pet, I'm stupid, hold, hold on. They both ask you to use the pedals, and of course tell you where to release it, and what I like most is this little part here in both songs. First, the Tamodachi Live one, and here is the way Adeline does it. And I feel like Tomodachi Life kinda tried to combine both of these structures into, you know, something more solid to keep it short, and as far as I know, it succeeded. It just goes to show how well they managed to make this song sound creepy. The fact that people came up with all of these weird theories just because the song sounds weird is just kind of amazing and totally makes the song a success. Um, 
This would also explain where the Miscarriage theory came from, as Paul de Seneville wrote this song in 1977 to tribute his newborn child, who was probably a very healthy baby and most likely even still alive and around this world, you know, just walking like you and I. Someone probably heard about it and decided to give it an anti-mini because it sounds sad. I know, it's a weird explanation, but I also think it brings closure for anyone out there looking for answers about this song. And yeah, who knows, maybe someone with more music theory knowledge and music in general can probably correct me, but as for now, I like this theory, I like this headcanon. What? You're telling me I'm giving you a thing and not telling you that it's 100% true? Huh, that's weird for me. Also, yes, finally, a video that doesn't last 900 hours!